And we are here with former women's world champion Alexandra Kostinyuk, one of the strongest chess players in the world, and having a, having a good Isle of Man tournament. Chess.com Isle of Man, yeah? Well, always good despite the results. Yeah. Al always uh, go by the results and enjoying the rest day. So as we've said, what's become the unofficial rest day at the Isle of Man halfway point. We're going to see her victory from round four with the white pieces against the top woman player from Mongolia. And uh, Alexandra, take it away. Yeah, I was playing with white um, and well, e4. That's okay, my favorite you, move, c5. Did you feel confident in your preparation for the uh, game? Actually, um, she is... Um, playing on almost one line with uh, black okay. so it was quite easy to, to prepare predict, there yeah. are some players who try to surprise their opponents there are different strategies right right and um some people that are stubborn and, yeah, and you know, well not yeah. stubborn but uh, yeah prefer to know one line but yeah. very Pr principled good. Yeah. yeah or well there are different approaches to yeah. chess so she plays always uh, this line a6 which is Paulsen, which transposes to Scheveningen a little bit later on. Okay. So it's open Sicilian. So she played the... Knight C6. Okay. She started with... Uh, there are up. different move orders, different nuances for each move order, but she starts always with this move, Knight C6, Knight C3, and then she goes Queen C7. Actually, she uh, already played a very interesting game in this tournament uh, against uh, Le, uh, Le Quang. Okay. Uh, and Vietnamese. She, yes. Okay. Um, and the game continued the same way, Bishop E3. A6. Mm -hmm. the, the other move to make is knight f6, trying right. to not yeah, to some not crazy to waste lines some time. with knight f6, knight b5, and f4 yes, stuff. Yes, right? that's okay, correct. Yeah. But so that's why probably she plays a6 to not to let white play it. Okay. Uh, so I I opted for bishop e2, like the most classical approach nowadays. Not the English attack, right? I mean, the that's... English attack is in Nijdorf, but yeah. nowadays the, I think the most fain, fancy way to play here was white's queen f3, and oh. then. Uh, alongside castle okay but yeah I've always played bishop e2 line and I don't know why to change it <laughs> for the moment enjoying it knight f6 castling bishop e7 there is another line which goes bishop before it's a bit crazy because the knight then goes to a4 kids don't don't, yeah, don't, don't do this don't <laughs> disregard no actually it's the best move I think it's the right. exception where we will yeah. say that the knight on the demon is um, the, the rim is bad, deep, but. but here you have to do it because actually we're heading to this square, right. which apparently is very weak. We sacrifice this pawn, knight e4, knight c6, and goes along long one right. series. It's possible, but did you expect her to go for the sharper line, uh, or you didn't know? She she played a few games with bishop uh, before, okay. but recently she switched to the main uh, continuation, which okay. is bishop e7. I played f4. So now I'm thinking about playing e5. Right. That's why black plays d6, protecting the square e5. And here comes the queen's transfer. White is transferring her qu uh, her queen to the king side, closer to the opponent's king. So castle. Still, still theory right now. Oh, a long, long theory. Okay. Actually, the main theory here, which um, uh, well, I think always about the match between Kasparov and Karpov, uh -huh. uh, starts with the move a4. Okay. They had a very long theoretical discussion, and that's been like the move number one, not letting black play b5 and right. securing some space. And the, I mean, the theory is enormous here and huge. But what's interesting, when I was, since I was a little girl, I played this line with queen g3. It's considered to be like the more direct approach. Yeah, more aggressive. Approach, yeah, approach. the more ag aggressive. But um, at the same time, it's... Um, it, well, when you play this line with white, you don't really hope for a huge advantage in, because uh, most of the pieces are being exchanged. Right. And uh, so rather for a small plus. Strange, yes. But a position strange. you know well and you played many yeah, times. So yeah, I stopped actually at some point because when the computer came to our uh, our planet, our life, <laughs> yeah. when they came to our planet, it, it started to show zero in right. most of the lines here. But right. who cares? Okay, at least it's quite it's quite direct. So exchange b5, threatening to play b4, then that's why I play a3, bishop b7, not really threatening to take on e4 just yet. Not yet. But yeah, because the pawn on g7, it's it's hanging, right? I have right. two my pieces. That's why the main move here for white is king h1, followed by rook a2 e1, and then bishop d3. Yeah. And then start to prepare for e5 or f5 breakthrough again. The theory is enormous. enormous there. And during my preparation, I 
I started to think, okay, why to play king h1 immediately? Started to look at some other possibilities and different setups. Uh, I've tried um, the setup rook a to d1 and bishop f3. That's another approach, but with king h1. More of a positional one, right? Where you're, yeah, you're probably trying to... it's against this um, yeah, yeah. this bishop, okay. which can be lead, very annoying in this right. line. So, but I played two games like this, and actually yesterday during my home preparation, I started wondering why. Why do I play king h1 here? Yeah. If it can be useful in this variation, it comes from when I play e5 to prepare e5 against this yeah, check. Yeah, you don't want the check, okay. But since I play bishop f3, anyway, I want to play bishop f3. Probably I can just wait and not move my king and okay. just, just do my plan. I played uh, bishop f3. And so this was a move order, a nuance that you kind of prepared specifically for this game? Yeah, actually, okay. I just... Um, Came this up I, with this idea. It was, a, it was an existential question. Yeah, an hour, and then an you hour realized, before the game, anymore. I didn't really have time to analyze and to go deeper. Right. So there are two um, main approaches for black here. Uh, the the first one is bishop c6, then queen b7, and starting the attack here on the okay. uh, queen side. She played rook a to d8, also quite quite a mm -hmm. solid way to play. Rook a to d1, rook d7. It's well, it looks like. When you look at the computer relation, it's always equal. Mm -hmm. But to play this line with black, you really need to look out for yeah. every breakthrough on yeah. every single move and uh, then make some small waiting moves because there is nothing actually you can do. You just need right. to sit and wait, maybe a little prepare your position and hopefully somewhere in the future do something. Uh, rook d3. So that... So far as my opening preparation, I prepared at home. And the idea behind this move order, I want to play rook f to d1 and then e5. Mm -hmm. And somehow it works very well uh, since I um, didn't waste time moving my king to h1. Um, but she played actually a very interesting move. Of course, I didn't have time to analyze it at home. She played a5, Ooh. very direct approach, very Trying concrete. to trade b5 for c2, I guess, potentially. Yes. And since my opening preparation finished here, I spent almost 45 minutes mm -hmm. trying to figure out the best way. I didn't succeed. Mm -hmm. uh, the best move apparently here was it's, it's taking on it. b5. But queen takes it too. Well, of course, I did spend a lot of time here uh, analyzing this position. One of the very first lines that I saw, and I was like, really? Yeah. <laughs> so happy to see it. I'll show it here. Rook c3. Queen takes b2, rook c5. Uh huh. This could be something queen special over here. Rook g5. Yeah. It's not the best moves that I'm showing, but it's just the most beautiful. Right. F5. Unfortunately, here e5 just twins and stops. So there's nothing. But during the game, I calculated knight takes e4, f takes g6. Wow. Here oh. comes the queen sacrifice, and and we have checkmate two. two. Yeah. G takes with puzzle book. with yeah with Forcing. discover checks to discover check here we go nothing like uh, moving a piece when I saw the slide yeah. <laughs> I got a little bit overexcited I was like yes that's 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 the way to finish the yeah. game that's yeah. you know <laughs> but then first of all of course e five right. e five would be but uh, there is a problem even faster uh, you know when you analyze lo um, when you try to calculate long 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 uh, forced lines right always check on the very first moves right because uh, that's how mistakes i mean yeah because then you're committed usually, to the long line but there's yeah, a problem on move usually, one usually right? mistakes uh, are miscalculations are so you were talking the, about rook c3 mm -hmm. queen takes b2 rook c5 okay queen b3 is a very strong move but nothing wrong is with mm. queen she takes d4 and when i saw queen takes d4 i okay and then d takes yeah Nothing. Okay, I have the queen. That's yeah. the only good thing in this position. Okay, and somehow I understood that this line doesn't work. And the wind went out of your sails, and okay. Yeah, I tried, <laughs> I tried to make work uh, a4, this right. pawn sacrifice, but somehow didn't feel like it should, uh, should, should work out. Uh, again, apparently I checked with uh, my computer really fast. Rook f to d1 is the strongest move. But it was not that clear for me during the game because of bishop a6. Here I should play rook 3 to d2. 
And if she plays queen c4, I have this nice move. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay, I see. Uh, and I will just continue the line because okay, it's not that obvious. Even when you look at, at this line uh, during the analysis, absolutely, I mean, you cannot really feel that uh, white is dominating yeah, it's dangerous so much. Yeah, dangerous. B2 falls yes, and it's, yeah. Uh, bishop B2. And I think king, you have, white has to play king H1 with the idea after bishop takes E3 to play bishop E2. Ah, wow. You know, I mean, computer makes, yeah. makes uh, it look simple, but Doesn't it make it look easy, um, yeah, but that's very complicated. Yeah, so nice geometry, but anyway. So that was uh, the way for white to proceed. I didn't manage to find it somehow. I don't know why, <laughs> but I went uh, for um, for the line. Well, I knew that it it's not really it doesn't give me anything, but I need to make a move uh, before the other standard reaction uh, for this um, right. uh, queen side attack. Mm, I didn't like it because of queen c4, mm -hmm. and it was not clear who is better for me at all so i decided to prepare for the move before by aha uh -huh, back to king h1 <laughs> yeah unfortunately yeah if you want to prepare e5 this right. move can be useful and my idea was after b4 so i took took and i played e5 it's a counter attack but it doesn't work here that well bishop takes e5 because f takes e5 doesn't give anything okay here queen c8 not the only move, but a very good one. And unfortunately, I was hoping for this knight e4. Yeah, trying to take advantage of the pin still. Immediately, or by exchanging first. Uh, and again, I saw this little nice trap that yeah. black could have gotten into with rook f to d8. It's bishop okay. takes h7. King has to take. Yeah, then. Well, it, he doesn't have to take, he okay, can yeah, go, yeah. but uh, yeah. Quickly and grab the h-file, very nice. And checkmate is coming. Oh. Okay, and again, that's why <laughs> I didn't take on d7, but of course I should have, because instead of this very weak rook f to d8. So you, you took uh, on d7 played. first, right, before that? Yeah. No, but she took, yeah, she took my knight, okay. I took. She uh, made a very strong move, which is g6, prophylactical move against mm -hmm. all the checkmating threats and attack. And I realized, to my deepest zero, that if I take here, rook takes d7, and she has a very uh, nice intermediate move. Knight takes e4. And you can't play queen d3 because knight because c5. Of, yeah, because of knight c5. Ugh. Okay, I spent almost 20 minutes here regretting about okay, how difficult my tournament is because I will make another draw here, <laughs> and so on and so on. But okay, time. Clock was ticking. I needed to make a move anyway, and I did. I did grab the rook, and she didn't take on e4. She didn't ah. see it. After the game, we discussed for a while briefly. I said that there was a very interesting move. Knight takes e4. She said, "Oh, I didn't. I didn't see it." But oh. knight takes d7. I mean, there is nothing wrong with knight takes d7. Yeah. Actually, computer shows like a little advantage for uh, black here. Okay. Okay, but bishop d4. She played queen c4, exchanging the queens. With the bishop pair into the endgame? That's what I was hoping for, but the problem is that she could have just played uh, bishop mm. c5 and no, no bishop pair. Yeah. And then, well, it should be about equal, right? We should, um, we should uh, agree on a draw soon. Uh, instead, you know, it's interesting because the position is absolutely harmless for a black, but was slightly little, I mean, smallest, smallest, smallest inaccuracies uh, with every move. Yeah. She creates problems for herself somehow. Okay, so she played rook d8. Usually it's a good idea to play right. the rook on the open file. That's why I you think You think same. that maybe she was playing for a win? Or? No, 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 no. Okay, not no, at no. all, but... Uh, I'm just wondering why, why not, you know, either uh, this C5. or, or even, oh. even this, if you really want, you know, if you want to force the trade, something to simplify. Yeah, I okay. don't know. I okay. don't know. That, that would have been a very good right. um, okay. move to make. Uh, rook d1. Mysterious rook move. Well, right? somehow <laughs> she probably she saw that knight c5 is coming, two bishops okay. are hanging. But here I played uh, bishop e2, uh -huh. protecting my rook. So my bishop is not free. That, oh, yeah, it's free to go. Yeah. Knight e4, not threatening to give a fork because my rook is protected. Right. That's important to <laughs> protect right. your pieces. g3, preparing the road to my king. Because as we know, in end games, the kings are essential. Yep. 
Bishop C5. Finally. Right. Finally, she decides to exchange uh, the bishops. Well, still, she didn't really spoil anything, yeah. of course. But still, a few critical moves but for few, you, right? Yeah, she, you she, have the she two gave on me one. a possibility right. to prepare the road for my king, for example. Right. So it's like a few extra tempi. Right. So she takes, I take, knight c5. Okay, I play king g1. was not clear, you know, this kind of perfectionist where to go. But it's probably <laughs> How much same. time did you spend on that, king g1 or king I didn't g1? have that much time oh, okay. <laughs> already. Um, okay, I like to go on the king. Yeah, it seems somehow, very direct, Yeah, right? somehow. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it looks yeah. more beautiful. Okay. And now I think after knight a4, immediately, b3. Unfortunately, I was trying to make this, this move work. Mm, sacrifice knight the b2. Bishop. Yeah, but b5, but it doesn't work. Ah, uh, check and hit. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. very yeah. nice. Okay. Yeah, check and then... That's I, disappointing. Well, I yeah. mean, it's too. It's not uh, yeah. advanced enough to, to make it work. So, b3 is the only move. Knight c3, bishop f3. But then, again, I didn't realize this endgame like, very deeply. She has um, two plans. She can go with her king to d6, or she can try to play e5. Mm -hmm. Again, bringing at some point the king to the center. And I'm not sure here whether I need to take on e5, or I can go just like this. But here, with exchange or without, she has a very strong pawn, mm -hmm. which will, I think, give her enough compensation to, to save the game, I mean, to make it a draw. Even if I win this pawn, yeah, it's although it's not that uh, easy to win, I mean, and my bishop doesn't have enough space here. Well, it's very close to a draw again, I haven't analyzed it to, to show you, like, the very, <laughs> the best way to proceed for black, but, again, she decided to opt for another plan, or she decided to play f6, and then to play e5. I played uh, king of two, and somehow she realized, she got scared for some reason, e5 would have been a nice way to proceed here. Blockade, king three. No? She probably got scared because she saw this possibility that I play c3, then b4. Uh -huh, very nice. I don't know, but anyway, I just sacrificed the pawn. I'm not sure it's enough to, to win. And she decided to change her mind. And uh, play instead of e5, play knight a4. But Going, here. Now you're up a tempo. Yeah. Uh, I can play b3 and um, transpose to the lines that we already discussed, but I played bishop g4 instead. Huh. Because it's a very good idea for me to, if she plays a5, to stop, right? They can't right. play you, you for her. that whole idea of yeah. e5. Right, very nice. That's why, of course, she doesn't play f5. She, she played king f7. And I played. King is three, yes. not protecting it, because if she takes here right now, she somehow she already gave me so much time. I can play king d four, and I will win eventually this pawn. And you and may trap the knight along with it. Well, it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. So I will just win it back. It just gives me more time. Right. Again, probably nothing, nothing terrible has happened for black, but somehow she already. Um, felt worried. She played e5. I took here. Wait, exchange the pawns. King e4. And then king d5. Again, the same idea. She took on b2. King c5. And yeah, she got so scared uh, that she decided to. It's not so easy already for black. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, after a few, you know, quite logical moves, it's yeah. already. Quite an issue. I mean, she played b3, but I think it's the worst move you can think of because she's creating a passed pawn for me, but right. she's helping me to move it further. Right, further away from the king. From the king. Easier, right. I mean, she should have kept it on the c file. Yeah. It, okay, king uh, before, knight b6, some troubles Right. already. But at least the, the, the pawn is on the c file, while when she played... Uh, when she played b3, the game is practically over. I think it's not possible to save it here. Yeah, I you think she has to play knight d3, yeah, right? So we, if we remove those pieces, I have a completely winning endgame, right. right? Right. It's just a destruction for the king, and then I take, actually. Pavel won the same way against Milkumian. In this yeah, yeah. tournament, he transposed, with, he sacrificed an extra piece, and, and transposed and to a pawn's endgame with a far yeah. uh, uh, advanced pawn. 
and he, here she tried to to do something but i think it's just too late and we made a few more moves and uh, well the game is practically over here she sacrificed uh, this pawn but it doesn't it doesn't help the situation um yeah the, i think she played knight a2 b5 e3 taking knight c3 bishop e2 mm -hmm. of course protecting my joker of the end game <laughs> yeah king a5 here i hesitated for um, She's hoping for a blunder. Somehow, did we did we put it correctly? The pawns here they were um, placed. I think the pawn was on h5. Okay. Yes, the pawn was on h5 somehow. I didn't ah because my bishop on g4 she pushed it h5. Okay. So here I hesitated for the moment uh, whether to play h4 securing the pawns or to play bishop c4. I played bishop c4 at the end, just you know mm -hmm. cutting of the uh, knight and the king from the central square. What's important here, the only drawing chance that she has, and she actually tried to, to, to make it work, bishop of seven, a very strong move. Sometimes a bishop is ideally placed like this, so it stops the pawns of um, the opponent, because I right. just take right. She played king f5, king d4, and she played h4. Yeah, so geez. the only drawing chance, yes, this is square yeah. because I have the light squared mm -hmm. bishop. If she manages, if she manages to sacrifice her knight for this pawn, it's going to be a draw. Right. It's terrible. It's, a, it's, it's a terrible. Nice creative resource. <laughs> it's a Don't you hate nightmare. that? Nightmare. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you have to be careful, but it's just impossible actually to sacrifice yeah. the, the knights knight. are just not. Yeah. Somehow I think our game continued like this: knight b6, king c5, knight d7, and I managed to push her back. Yeah, to push her, to push her away from uh, from the. From my pawn. Just, yeah, the knight is I just so helpless six, against yeah. the pass pawn. Yeah. So. And that's it. Yeah, it's a very, I mean, it's not the most fascinating game you can think no, of, but, but it was nice to win, yeah. first of all. It's my first win in this tournament, and when you make a few draws one after another, you start wondering uh, whether you're capable right, of winning. Can. So it's always nice to win a chess game, and it's quite in instructional. It has a, a very interesting opening idea yeah it has to be analyzed further and um and almost a queen sack for me yes so times. i found i found <laughs> and the counter right. counter queen uh, sacrifice yeah so and uh, the end games yeah the, quite instructional the bishop versus a knight what's your experience in tournaments like this obviously the the format of the open event a little bit different than an invitational or, or a round robin or something like that where uh you, you're like you said, like you really want to get on a roll, like you want to win a game and start feeling better about your play. And how do you feel about it after getting this win, getting some rest that may be ready to finish strong? Well, I didn't uh, feel, I don't feel that I'm completely recharged after the Olympiad. Probably it's yeah. still there. A lot of players are saying that. I think yeah, I, I yeah. just played, I mean, 30 minutes of the first round, I already felt that it's not here, you know, yeah, the yeah. energy that yeah, you want yeah. to invest in yeah. every single move that yeah. you make, it's not here. Right. And this tournament, I consider more like a warm-up for me, for right. the coming uh, World uh, yeah. Women's World yeah, uh, the not, Championship, the knockout, yeah. yeah, in Hunting Man Seek, so I don't really want to waste my energy, and I'm still lacking it, yeah. so well, it's great. not here. But um, I enjoyed the venue, the playing hall, the tournament itself so much, Last year, despite my poor finish, um, it it doesn't happen so often for me in open tournaments. I mean, it's yeah. this tournament is just an exception. So, even though it's very close to Women's World uh, Championship, and I'm the kind of player who relies a lot on the energy level. Yeah, I mean, there are some players who you know just right. Very but you work very hard at the board, yeah. and you need to have that. You need yeah, to be able so to. I'm feeling that. I feel that they're really low still yeah. after the Olympiad and keeping in mind that the World Championship is coming, I'm kind of... Well, how do you, how do you feel about your, your, your chess overall right now and your preparation for that event? I, I mean, you're a former women's world champion, still probably the most recognized, if not one of the most recognizable face uh, for, for women in chess. And uh, what are your, I mean, I'm sure a lot of your fans would hope to, to see you back there again. Uh, what, how do you I mean, feel going? You in? never know. You never know. You never right? know. Especially in those formats, right? It's it's a very it's a knockout, one mistake, one and mistake, you're done. right? You're and at the same time, went. if you're playing well, anything yeah. can happen. Of course, right? and so of course, if I start just tournament, I try to do my best. But how it goes, 
you never yeah. know yeah. still so. but do you i mean it, the tie breaks move to to rapid eventually like if you remain a tie match how do you feel about your particular chess skills in that format i'm i've always enjoyed rapid and blitz okay. so for rapid and blitz i'm feeling fine but we'll see how it goes yeah you know, i have experience to be eliminated quite uh, soon and to go all the way right. up to the final several times uh, starting from my very first knockout event in yeah. 2001 I started in Moscow L long ago reaching the final yeah from the first I, I attempt. remember I remember and yeah. uh, actually losing barely on the tie breaks yeah um, so uh, anything can happen and I uh, so always will try to enjoy chess I'm sure that the uh, um, chess uh, Chess World uh, will enjoy our championship yeah. as well, despite yeah. the fact that <laughs> yeah, Corona your event will probably be uh, <laughs> yeah, more exciting, more exciting, I mean, more let's, emotional. Let's be completely and, honest, right? I yeah. mean, a lot of those, uh, you know, who knows what will happen? But obviously, we wish you the best of luck. I mean, all of your yeah, fans and you so everyone much. at Chess.com will be watching, and uh, good luck in the rest of the tournament. Yeah, thank you. And uh, good luck in Conti Monsisk. Thank you.